I know every pet is lovely, but she's, she's a person. She closes doors, she turns lights off, she does everything on command. In the morning she was perfectly fine when I left her, give her breakfast. In a few hours, something like eight, nine o'clock at night, the bed was closed. She was knocked down. All the chest and the lungs were full of liquid. I couldn't afford to take her to the emergency room. She would have died. Yeah. I don't think there's any other, any other animal group that does what we do. It's really what we are all about at the Animal League is number one, how can we keep animals in good homes that they're already in, keep them there, keep them off the streets, keep them out of the shelters. If they can't solve the problem themselves, they have somebody they can call to help. I, I think being there for people is probably the biggest thing that we do, really. Here at the Animal League of Green Valley, are we really going to get to the root of the problem and really solve it just by sheltering more and more animals, by building more kennels? In the last 20 to 30 years, we have cut the killing rate in shelters nationwide from about 20 to 30 million down to under 4 million. And here's your certificates to get them spayed or neutered. When you go in, you're going to give them the yellow certificate. And they will do your surgery at, at no cost for you, okay? Okay. Last year, we did 1,500 spays and neuters in our area. And you stop and think about how many litters that kept from being born. And that's kind of where we're going to really solve that problem. We are not going to rescue our way out of the problem because you have maybe one dog that needs a home. Now you have 10 or 12 more dogs that need homes. So we decided that we needed to get out in the community and get people to spay and neuter their animals. Each and every spay and neuter is, is really, really important to them. All you need to do is give them this yellow copy when you go in. Okay. All right. Especially with people who have multiple animals in their household, or are actually out there sometimes picking up animals off the street that they would like to keep. They have animals unspayed and unneutered that would have litters. Where do those litters go? And it just is a never-ending problem. I volunteer as an outreach driver. They'll call me and you know, somebody will need a dog transported to the vet or somebody will need food delivered to them, which is what we're doing today. The more dogs we can keep in a home, the fewer dogs that have to be in a pound. 10, 15 days and then they put it to sleep. So we're be way better off encouraging people to keep the animals in their house, but they're living on a limited budget. Today we're heading to an area called Dog Patch. A lot of stray dogs, a lot of stray animals. The person we're going to deliver food to takes in these strays. He kind of acts as a division of the animal league, in effect, because uh, these dogs would be out here breeding and be having, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten puppies, uh, and they can breed multiple times. So the po dog population would be way worse than what it is right now. I think these are the first two dogs I ever started out with, this dog and uh, his, his brother. We've picked up quite a few dogs. My name is Michael Porter. I have 13 dogs. People are so willing to get their animals spayed and neutered if you can provide them with a little bit of support. They help us. All my dogs are fixed. They give me dog food whenever I need it. If they didn't fix the dogs, and the dogs that I got, there'd be a lot of dogs out here, a lot more. They love their animals, they want to take care of their animals, and one of the biggest problems is finding a way to do that, you know, especially if they're already in financial difficulty. My name is Juan Ceballos. When I was diagnosed with my disease, I started just getting out of control, not caring. When we came here, I noticed there was a bunch of dogs running around, so I started taking them in and helping them. This girl right here, her name is Macy. She changed me. For some reason, I can see something in her eyes and she needed me. And I couldn't go nowhere unless, because what would happen to her if, if I took my life or if I did something dumb? I made a promise to help them in any way. There was times where it was really tough at the beginning. I started buying used stuff and reselling it to get by. And that's how I do it now. If they are 
having financial difficulties. Why not go into that home and help them out a little bit keep in keeping that animal? They love their animals, they want to keep them healthy. There's been times where they ate what I ate, all eight of them. They don't have to worry about what am I going to give, feed my poor dog or cats. They can come to the Animal League and we can provide them with, with some food. I mean, you would be surprised the amount of animals that are turned in simply because people cannot afford a full month's worth of food for the animals. If it wasn't for Animal League or Green Valley, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. I just dedicate my life to the pets. Macy's back, she was running around a trailer and the trailer, when the little puppy would go underneath and she'd go underneath, there was a hook. And, whoosh, and it opened up her back like a page. And I just I wanted to pass out. That's how I found the Animal League of Green Valley. Nancy, she told me right away, take her here, take her there. And you know, I thank God for him getting me this far and the help that I get from the Animal League of Green Valley. She's my life. She's my number one girl. Yes, I also, yes, I do. I thank them so much, sorry. I've had people tell me that they would go into a veterinarian, they would really beg and plead and, and they get turned away. Many times what happens to these animals is they do turn them into a humane organization. The group will say, well sure, we'll take your animal, we'll get it all the medical help that we want, but we're going to keep your animal and find another home for it. I don't care if a person's rich, poor, indigent. They love their animals, they want to take care of their animals. And one of the biggest problems is finding a way to do that when you are on a really strict budget or in serious financial trouble. We want to keep animals in good homes. We don't want people to have to lose their animals. Losing an animal just adds to, you know, their suffering. My name is Elia Smith, and this is Missy. I came back from work and I found her breathing horribly. I didn't realize you know, what it was. I, if I don't find anybody that can take her like that, give me some type of payments or something, she would have just died there. I called Nancy. She didn't even doubt for a second. She said, take her. So I just could not have done it without them. And we run with her to, to the emergency hospital in Tucson. But they were putting one needle after another one with this, pouring this liquid out. She was borderline. They said, Another couple of hours tops, and she wouldn't be breathing at all. It was her whole, all this. All they gave us the news that the antibiotic was working. Um, I mean, all this time, Nancy was so kind. The animal league practically saved a member of my family. <laughs> That's how I see it. That's how we all see it. Missy is now eight years old. Another big thing we do is transportation. I'm just kind of the fill-in. Diane is the, uh, the one that does 90% of the outreach work. I've got Monday afternoon, I have to pick up a lady. I've got a 3.30 appointment at Santa Cruz for her. And then Tuesday morning, I'm picking up that dog. Wednesday morning, I'm bringing the dog back. And plus, I'm picking up another lady at about 9.45 to bring her to Dr. Sophia's with her dog. We're taking Lucy home. Yeah, to her mommy and her daddy, the little chihuahua that was spayed yesterday. We got Lucy. She spayed and got all her shots. So many people, they are reliant on one car. That car breaks down. They're not going anywhere. You have one car in the family. It's gone during the day from someone who's using it. They have no way to get their animal into the vet. Hi, hi, honey. Hi. <laughs> so transportation is, is a big part of what we do. We want to keep pets in their home, if at all possible. And that's why we provide the meds. That's why we provide the food. Thank you. And we'll give them dog houses. We'll give them vet care. Whenever the dog gets sick or the dog needs shots, whatever, whatever they need, basically, what we will do to keep the dogs at home. There, what a good boy. A big part of what we do in outreach also is help people to learn how to care properly for their animals. What kind of food they should be having, how they, you know, should they be groomed, how about their toenails, are they getting clipped? Those things can cause big problems in the future. Get some of those bad teeth extracted. We want the community to look at us as an example about how to care for animals. If you help your neighbor train their dog, so that it doesn't jump the fence, then that dog doesn't come to a shelter. 
We have some wonderful trainers that we will send out to people's homes. They will go into the home, they will work with the entire family. My smallest dog is my pit bull, my biggest dog is a 170 pound mastiff. I'm the director of training for Central Pet here in Amato, Arizona. The Animal League of Green Valley will ask questions like, do you think having a professional trainer come out will help you if we can have her address the soiling problem in the house or your dog biting the neighbor or your dog not liking your new wife? Um, a lot of times it's because of bites or it's fear or whatever have you, potty issues. Good sit. Good sit. Good girl. Most times I can help and offer suggestions, whether it's on management or behavior modification, and the Animal League doesn't hesitate to send me out on cases where it, they think I can be beneficial. So we've tried to look at the various aspects of why are animals coming into shelters and what we can do to stop that from happening, to keep animals in loving homes. That's what outreach is really all about. We're trying to eliminate this problem, but we still get a lot of kittens, we still get a lot of puppies, but we're trying. If a stray comes, somebody has a stray, and you say, and you look at it and say, that is a really nice dog, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, I can't, you know, I, I, you know, I can't afford it, I can't afford another dog. Under what conditions could you keep it? Could you keep it for just a couple of days? If I give you some food and a leash and we stick some shots in it, maybe to give us a little chance to, to see if we can, can get some room going here. You know, I could do that, I, I could do that. And then um, maybe we call them in a couple days or even as they're going out the door. Now, if you decide you like this dog, we can, we, we'll get a spade for you so you won't have to worry about it having puppies or anything uh, if you decide you want to keep it. It won't, cost, it won't cost you anything. People are surprised, they don't, they don't, they don't expect that proactiveness. I definitely think it's making a difference, and I know it's making a difference for the animals, and I know it's making a difference for the, uh, for the people, too. Why you come over here on this side? Look at this. I'm Sandra Jean Kessler. For us, our, our pets are our family, in, in addition to our family. They would have just been stray, and they're all, they've all been rescued. We honestly don't have you know, the, the money right now to afford um, the pet care for all these pets. Well, on the farm, there's Lola, who's 14, and Tubbs, Chico, Deidre is a year, Rally Girl, and Daisy. And then we also have cats, Cisco, Callie, and Sassy. The more people we can get to do that, the better off we are, the more impact we have for a small facility. And the way that we do that is going into the home, helping them get their animals spayed and neutered, helping them get their animals the shots that they need. We can go over and ask for pet food when we're short of pet food, and they are more than happy and, and very lovingly give us gigantic bags of puppy chow or kitten chow and bones and canned dog food. We understand if we aren't out in the community working with people, helping people with their animals, helping keep animals in the home, you know, we, we aren't ever going to get anywhere. It's a, it's a good deal for the owner, but it's a really good deal for the pet. We're constantly going and constantly doing. We do the very, very best we can, and, and it's very um, um, challenging, <laughs> very challenging. I don't have enough words to thank the Animal League and Nancy and everybody. I mean, they just do a wonderful job, and they really help the community. They really do. You know, um, I couldn't take care of 13 dogs. There's no way. I will not be able to care for the animals, and I do rescue a lot of them. You go home and you pat yourself on the back and you feel pretty good about what you've done. It's, I get back more than I give. I know that. I can honestly say that this is one of the best things I've ever done in my life. I'm living the dream of helping as many animals as, as I possibly can.